where this machine here is capable of pulling about 250 amps, that machine over there is capable of pulling 350 amps continuously. I don't know what kind of description to give you uh, about this part other than it's a stainless steel ring. We don't, uh, we don't have the, uh, the name of this part, the description, what it's called, what its part number is, because it's none of our business. This particular tap is a two flute tap. It's very close in size to this tap here. This happens to be a 256 helicoil tap, which is very close to a 440 tap, which I'm using as an example of what we're trying to accomplish. So all that you, the, the hole that you burn into it you want to make sure that it gets into these small troughs once it which is known as the web and so you select an electrode that will burn a hole no larger than the web of the tap that's this cross section between this trough and that trough and that leaves just the threaded portion itself this adjustment here determines the vibration Okay, the smaller the electrode, the less vibration you want. Otherwise, the electrode will wobble and flop around a lot. So this particular tap here is what they call a 256 STI. The STI stands for standard thread insert. This is a helicoil tap. The electrode size that we choose for this diameter is a 60,000 diameter electrode, which is the perfect diameter electrode to burn a hole through the tap, get into the fluted portion of the tap without touching the thread. The next adjustment or setting that you have to determine is the amount of heat you're going to pull. That's done by this selector here. That will select the amperage that's required to burn the hole, the right diameter. Now again, what I'll do is I will make one, make contact with this one time. I'll turn the light off. You might be able to see some action of the heat or the arc take place. That's actually starting to burn a hole in the tap. I won't go all the way through, so I'll show you exactly what's taking place. I also uh, take a second look at it to make sure that I'm on center. We haven't burned through the tap. You can just see that the electrode, let me start from the top, has penetrated that far. So we have started our, our hole through the tap. Also, at this point, I double check my center to make sure that I'm in the, uh, on the center of the tap. So, at this point, we'll continue burning through. This is a through hole, not a blind hole, so I don't have to worry about setting the scale. There. These are very shallow taps, so it didn't take long to burn. Now you can see the electrode has gone completely through the tap. We were right on center. The chisel's a little dull from the last tap. We'll resharpen that. We'll locate a pieces of the tap that There, there's a piece of tap on that side. I can see the other half of the tap on this side. It was a two foot tap, so there was two sides to it. So we knock out that side, we loosened up the other side. Now at this point, 
we can just knock the remaining portion of the tap right on through. So both sides of the tap, this was a two flute tap, j exactly like the tap I showed you in, in the sample explaining the flutes and uh, what's burning and what's not burning. So that tap is out. And we have a, an open hole with no tap. After you uh, burn out the tap, there's, let me show you closely. Do you see those little ears sticking up? We call them tails. We have to get rid of that and flatten this electrode back out before we start removing the next one. If I try and take the next tap out without flattening the electrode out, it'll move it off center one way or the other. So it's very critical before you take your next tap out, or say it's your first tap and this electrode happened to be put away like this, it's very important that the these tails, these little small ears sticking up, are ground away and the electrode is flattened out. Then when it makes contact with the tap in the hole, it's not going to move from side to side, it's going to stay on center. So, there's a small piece of the old tap left you saw fall out, which we call the core of the tap. That just, did you see that fall out as, as I ground it? So okay, we'll move to this. This is a finer wheel. These are very fragile and delicate. If I take this to a coarse wheel, it's liable to split the electrode and they're too expensive to take a chance of splitting. So we'll grind this nice and flat for the second tap removal. So we go through the same process as we did just a few minutes ago. Put the electrode up inside the chuck. I have to zap this one time to get rid of the water. There we go. We'll bring it down to the face. Okay, we'll get the electrode centered over the tap. These smaller taps are not easy to do. It's, it's so important that you're on center. You could be 20 thousandths off center. That's not very much. You know, that's like 10 diameters of a hair. If, you're, if you hit any of the thread, here's a, here's a hole without a tap in it. If you hit any of that, uh, that hole while you're burning, you're going to ruin the part. So it's extremely critical that we are on center when we start our burn. Now again, what I'll do is I will make one, make contact with this one time. And I see. We start the burn. We'll check our center again, just to make sure that sometimes the electrode can move from side to side. These small electrodes are, are very thin and they're very flexible. So even though I ground the electrode flat and told you how important that was, if the top of the tap is not flat, that can also throw the electrode out. So it's, it's, it's real important that after you make your first burn, you, you check your center again. And then you make a slight adjustment if it is not quite on center. In this case, the adjustment was ever so slight because we are so close to center. So we can continue burning. This happens to be a through hole, so we'll just continue burning and until we see sparks fly out of the other side. When the sparks fly out the other side, we know we're up through the tap. Now that's sparks coming from the top as it's burning the tap, but you can also see sparks coming through the bottom of the hole because it is a through hole.
There. Now you can see the electrode. You can see from the sparks the electrode is burned through. I'll push it on through. You can see that the hole has been successfully done. Also importantly, you can see that the small tails on this electrode that has burned away slightly. As I mentioned, it burns almost an equal amount of electrode as it does tap. You'll see that these two little ears on here are pretty much, let me, let me back this out, pretty much uniform. Can you see that? The, the size of the small ear or tail is about the same on this side as it is on that side. That's an automatic indication that I was on center. And those tails are created, now let me show you, I don't think I explained that to you. Those tails are created because they're not, the, the disintegration part of it is not removing this portion. It's only removing, it's removing the center and, and uh, going into these troughs or, or flutes. So at, as it's burning, it's burning the solid portion of the tap into these small flutes. As it's burning into these small flutes, it's not, the, the electrode's not making contact with any portion of the tap. So you do end up with these small ears because that's not where we're burning. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so it's not, it's not burning any of the electrode away because we're not making contact with the tap. We're going into these small troughs or flutes. So as in the last part, we were right on center. The chisel's a little dull from the last tap. We'll resharpen that. We'll locate the pieces of the tap that There, there's a piece of tab on that side. I can see the other half of the tap on this side. It was a two flute tap, so there's two sides to it. So we knock out that side, we loosened up the other side. Now at this point, we can just knock the remaining portion of the tap right on through. So both sides of the tap, this was a two flute tap, exactly like the tap I showed you in, in the sample explaining the flutes and uh, what's burning and what's not burning. So that tap is out. And we have a, an open hole with no tap and a perfect thread, a, a, a perfect thread. The electrode made no contact with the material it burned the tap, burned a hole through the tap. I was able to knock out the pieces of the tap. The pieces that were remaining were equal in size, telling me that I was right on center. So there's uh, no question that this was uh, an extremely successful job.